What's going on everybody? For today's video, I'm, I guess really depends on how long this takes. Um, I'm gonna either do one really big video or I'll break it up into like handguns and rifles. But I want to, um, I've been getting questions about things and just wanted to do an updated, um, my entire gun collection video. I'm going to be showing you of every gun I own um, and the caliber that it shoots because some people are very unfamiliar with some of the weirder calibers and I'm pretty sure I have shown every single gun on this channel at least with, whether it be in like a bigger video that shows my guns or if I'm just doing like my weekly rambles where I show you I bought a gun um, so I'm pretty sure I've shown them all, but nonetheless, this is, as of me filming this video right now, in 2023, um, this is every gun I own, and the caliber that it shoots. So, well, actually, I did bring this out, um, if you've ever played the original Modern Warfare 2, um, this is pretty, pretty, uh, very similar. During your fight with Shepard at the very end, um, when you, you pull the knife out of your chest, uh, when you're playing a soap, and you throw it to finally kill Shepard, um, I got that knife. Uh, it's, so it could definitely use a sharpen. It's nothing like, it's sharp, don't get me wrong. Um, but it's nothing like revolutionary when it comes to uh, like the like blade sharpness or anything. Um, but yeah, this is the knife. It was actually only twenty bucks on uh, Midway USA. But uh, I just thought this, I just thought this was kind of cool, especially for the price. And it even came in a little uh, a sheath. All right, so that's the only non-gun thing I was. I'm planning on showing. I have everything kind of laid out here. Um, I guess in no particular order. So I'm going to start off with this bad boy. This is my Pieta 1858. Um, I finally have some black powder coming in. I've not shot this yet, and I've not shot any black powder yet. Um, but hopefully I can, hopefully it arrives soon and I can shoot it. Um, I guess actual black powder is not extremely hard to uh, come by right now. In fact, I don't think anyone's really making, I don't think anyone's really making black powder. Um, they make a black powder substitute and basically what that is is it's, it is black powder but they've added some stuff so it makes it less, um, I guess explosive, reactive, whatever word you want to use. Um, but I can only imagine actually shooting this thing. I'm trying to click this without being too loud, jeez. There we go. Well, this is a 44 Magnum. Or I guess just 44 caliber. Um, black powder. I have no idea, and that's what I said. I, we kind of, the other day, Midway USA had a, uh, a really good sale on black powder. And they waived the hazmat fee if you bought, like, over $200 worth of black powder. And so that's exactly what I did. Me and my brother split some. Um... I mean, there's there's really no way, especially with just one gun, that I'm ever going to shoot that much black powder. So, I'm hoping that, um, I'm hoping what ends up happening is I really like black powder, love shooting it, it's a great gun, and I want to buy more black powder stuff. Um, from what I've heard, actually, a lot of people do enjoy black powder, but 
I don't know. I've never shot it. Um, where'd it go from here? I, I mean, I guess... Where'd it go? Alright, I'll just show off my... Uh, in, in no particular order. I'll just lump these three together. So these three are my uh, my current carry pieces. Um, this is the uh, Sig Sauer, the P365. It had a little Zaphire barrel to it, and a Grey Guns uh, grip. It. Um, I mean, this is perfect for me for like carrying in uh, like gym shorts. I like to wear that a lot, especially in the summertime. Um, and I find that this is a really good package for for that. It does come, obviously it has a, a, a 10 round flush fit mag. It has a 12 round mag that extends just a little bit. And then with some love, um, the macro mag comes with a really big base plate. Um, So that way you can have this monstrosity. But when it comes to when it comes to carry, this is usually what I what I do with this one. If I'm carrying this, it's because I'm wearing something that, like like I said, like gym shorts that I can't really conceal very well, um, or just. I could even, I guess I could even boot like, I like a little ankle holster for this guy, but regardless, it's a, um, it's just a small gun when I need a small gun. This is my medium, if you want to call it that. I guess if you want to call it a medium, this is my, uh, Glock 43X. It does have the upgraded 15 round magazine by Shield Arms, and I put a little TRL-7 uh, light on there. So the nice thing is, you can just uh, hit it with your finger. You don't have to remove your finger from the trigger, you can just kind of hit it with your nail. This one, um, like I said, it's a little less concealable with the bigger, uh, with like the longer magwell, but I can hold 15 rounds and uh, I mean, yeah, it's just when I can get away with carrying a little bit bigger of a gun, I, I usually do. And lastly is this big boy. This is just a Glock 19. This was my first ever handgun. Um, this one's a Gen 5. I have the TRL-1 on there. And I have the, uh, it's normally a 15 round mag, but I added the plus two. So that way it's a full, uh, it's a full 17 rounds. This is usually what I carry in the winter time. Obviously this is a much bigger and beefier gun. So when I'm wearing like a big winter jacket, a hoodie, anything like that, um, I can usually get away with carrying this. And same thing, got a nice little, uh, light on there. And you can, uh, you can hold it up, which just temporarily turns it on, and you can hold it down and let off your finger. This is usually my winter gun. And I guess for uh I could never carry this thing, but this is the 31 round magazine. For anyone who's uh this this is obviously usually just a range toy. In fact, again, like I said, this is a 15 round mag. This is what comes with the Glock. Um, my plus two that's on here right now came on this and made this one a 33. But I'd rather I put it on this because there's actually a practical use for for it on a 15 rounder versus a, a 17 rounder, or excuse me, the 33 rounder. So 
that's my, uh, like I said, those are my three winter, or just my three carry pieces that I have. All right, so the more I think about it, this will probably just be its own standalone video. Next up. Is this bad boy? This is my Heritage Rough Rider. Um, you can get this much chambered in 22LR, and you can get 22LR for stupid cheap. If I can get my hand in it, it's just a little tiny guy, if you've never seen one before. Like I said, this was sold in 500 round container. This is without a doubt um, obviously a range toy. It's a 16 inch barrel, which means you can actually technically put a stock on this and make it a rifle. Um, it is just absolutely, I don't even know if I can do it justice, like try to hold it. It's a big fun range toy. Um, I mean, six shots of 22. There's like absolutely no recoil to it. It's a lot of fun. You could shoot this both hands, one handed. Um, it is just, it's one of those guns that if I'm taking someone to the range for the first time, I'd definitely bring this out there because it's just, it's fun. It's a fun, goofy gun. 22, super cheap. I mean,. It's just, it's just a silly, goofy gun. That's really all I can say about that. Set that over there. Um, show you a weird one. This is my um, Nagant revolver. It is a model um, 1895, and from all the research that I've done um, around it, it could have been made any time after 1895, and there's a marking on here from 1945. That means there was tons of these rifles, just or excuse me, handguns out there, just on the market, and this stamp here. If you can even see it, you might not be able to. Um, what that means is it was repurposed and remade for World War II. Whether or not this saw combat use or not is, I'll never know, but that does mean it was repurposed for the war. Um, just a little Russian Nagant revolver. I found it to be pretty cool, and it does still shoot. Um, Shoots 762 Nagant, or it's called 762 by 38R, I want to say. This is one of my favorite rounds to show off because the bullet is actually in the casing. And it's it's just really goofy and silly. This is one of mine, obviously, uh you know, try to get a gun of every caliber, and I strongly doubt I can do this quietly, but yeah, I totally couldn't do that quietly, but when you go to cock it back, um, you'll notice that the cylinder will actually slide forward, and it will push the bullet out of the, uh, out of the casing into the cylinder. So, yeah, and then when you decompress the trigger, um, you can see that the cylinder slides back. So, definitely a weird caliber. Um, World War II kind of... Maybe World War II, or maybe it's just World War II era. I don't really know. And probably never will know. But, nonetheless, it is a silly, goofy gun. And I absolutely love that sort of thing. Speaking of silly, goofy guns, I love these two together just because they fire the same rounds. Um, 
This is my Taurus Judge. This is the all polymer one. And then this is my Bond Arms. This one's a rough, round, rough and rowdy. They're both chambered in 45 Colt and 410 shotgun shells. Um, theoretically, you could carry this. It's got a really um, strong trigger, so it's not like it's going to go off in your pocket. Um, it's a big, clunky gun. I mean, some people say you can carry this thing. I probably wouldn't. Um, I, I bought some rounds for it. This is some Hornaday. It's got so it. It's got two thirty-five caliber round balls and then a forty-one caliber slug. So these rounds are. These rounds are no slouch. Let me put it that way. That's a little 410, but like I said, it's got a slug in there and some. It's got a slug and two balls. That's what she said. <laughs> it, it, it's a lot to shoot out of these guns. Even if you're just taking it to a range, it's a lot to shoot out. I can only imagine actually carrying something like that. And then again, there's a lot of just. If I was to carry it, try to shut a little bit of this up. If I was to carry it, this is what I would use, which is 45 Colt or 45 Long Colt. Um, but then again, can, I mean, can you imagine? This is a this is a big, big round to be shooting out of, like even this little gun. I had one gentleman in the store the other day, when I was at my local gun store, he said, uh, he was like, what do you possibly need more than two shots for? He said he carries, he's got a vest with two derringers in it. He says if you need more than that. I found it to be quite silly. Um, I cannot imagine, because he says he has two of these, I cannot imagine... Because, like I said, even at the range, this thing kicks your butt in, out of this little tiny gun. I can only imagine you're in a scenario where you are you need to draw your firearm. You're, you're sweating, your heart's racing, you're... They say a lot of the times, like, your motor function actually goes out the window. Um, and in a survival situation, the blood from your hands and feet, from your lower extremities, gets pushed back to your... Um, to your heart and, in a, and the problem with that is in a survival situation that involves a self-defense shooting your hands uh, lose its blood so they can be they can become slow and there, there's a lot of there's a lot of science that goes into self-defense shootings but I cannot possibly imagine pulling this thing out when I'm like fearing for my life and then unloading one of these big bad boys These are my two 410s and 45 Colts. Um, I've always wanted a Derringer. That's kind of the reason I got this one. And then they're just, these are range toys to me. They are absolute, I mean, even this thing is, there's not much grip when you're, uh, when you're trying to unload it, like a 40, even a 45 Colt. So these are just range toys, just a silly, goofy nonsense. Which is the sort of thing I love. Moving on. This one is my Beretta um, Model 84 BB. She's a. This was one. This was my grandfather's. Um, the story behind it, if you if you can even you could see it. So the story behind this gun is that one of my uh, my grandparents had a maid um, and 
her while well, she, she, she had a key to the house. Um, while she like when she left after cleaning one day, um, her I think it was her son stole her key from her, went into the house, my grandparents' house, and stole this gun. And rather than scratching off the serial number, which is on this side here, they scratched off the model number. And even then, they didn't really scratch it off. They just very lightly scratched it. They didn't really scratch it off. Um, but they then used this, I uh, think, an armed robbery? I think they tried to rob a... If I remember correctly, they tried to rob like a convenience store with it and then left it at the crime scene. And then obviously it was reported stolen by my grandparents, so it made its way back to them. Um, wild story that this, this poor gun's been through. But, um, unfortunately my grandfather, this has been, oh gosh, probably 10 years ago now. Uh, my grandfather got Alzheimer's and... My grandmother didn't want uh, a gun in the house when he was, uh, is, he, he would like, he would wander, he would, he was in the military, so sometimes he would get rowdy, I guess is the word I'll use. So, she no longer wanted a gun in the house, so she gave it to me. This is, if I, if I grab some ammo. This is chambered in the little tiny 380. Um, a lot of women, and again, I don't think there's a right or wrong to this argument, but a lot of women will use 380 for their carry guns. Um, I guess while we're here, I'll bring it out. So this is 380, a lot of women will carry this, and then this is a 9mm. So, I mean, there is a little bit more kick for 9mm, but not really that much more. But regardless, a lot of women tend to carry 380 out of like smaller guns. And, I mean, this gun still shoots. It shoots great. It's a, but, just because of how old it is and everything, I don't want to. I believe that 84 means it was a 1984. But, regardless, I don't, I don't want to carry something like this. Um, I guess while we're here on 380. Um... see here I got a couple guns so this is my little uh, MMP bodyguard 380 this is a really small compact gun um, does have a safety this is the sort of thing that you think a woman would carry um, this it's great for boot carrying or just I'm going for a run. You could just throw this in your pocket. Um, the only problem, it has a ridiculous, I think it's a nine pound trigger pull. It is absolutely ridiculous. And I usually don't carry this because of that. Just because again, you're ex like, it's just such a long and goofy trigger pull. So typically I don't, I don't carry this, but I mean, hey, to each their own. And then lastly, I took this out the other day, is my Altor. This one's also chambered in 380. You've seen this a lot on like GunTubers uh, pages. Um, the only thing I don't, it's, for the money I paid for it, it, I don't mind it. 
The only thing I don't like is you have to pull the trigger back to the point where you you no longer can physically hold on to it and then just let it go to fire it. And the problem with that is like, even if I'm holding on to it really good, my, my finger hits my other finger. So you almost have to hold it like you have to hold it weird. And then even then you can't really hold it with two hands because then you're so you end up, I ended up having to sing, like, single hand it. It is just so, it's so goofy. I mean, I love it, don't get me wrong, for the price and what it is. It's a single shot 380. I mean, it's, it's goofy, it's silly. It's another fun range gun, I guess. But, uh, I just, I don't know. It is just an absolute goofy gun. So that is all my 380s. I guess I can show you my boring 9 mils. I guess I'll kind of just... I guess I'll just kind of lump them all together. I'll just lump them all together and then just kind of briefly go over them. Well, I already showed you my three carry nine mils. All right, so that's all my nine mils that I have. Um, these guns here, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just. I have enough carry guns that usually these don't end up in the rotation, or maybe I need to buy a holster for them, I don't know. I guess I'll start over here. This is my Palmetto State Armory Dagger. It's a Glock 19 clone. It does have a threaded barrel, which is kind of nice. Um, even though I've never used it, because I live in a state that doesn't allow suppressors. but. I, I got it because it was cheap. I paid like 300 bucks for it. The, the thing is, like a Glock 19 is not, like an actual Glock's not that much more than this. So like, I bought one just to have one when it first came out. And it's a, it's a fun, silly range toy. But I just, there's just really no purpose for it to exist, in my opinion. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a good gun, it shoots good, I've had no problems with it, but... There's nothing really special about it. Especially compared to a actual Glock uh, 19. And the same thing over here. This one has a nice big 21 rounder. Um, this is the M18. I got it when it first came out. Same thing, uh, the military I think just adopted it at the time. It's it's another 9mm, and I have enough 9 mils, and I have enough calibers especially that I don't like to shoot 9 mil anymore. I'd rather shoot another cooler, bigger, better caliber. So, again, no, absolutely nothing wrong with the gun. I love it, it shoots great, it's got night sights, but I just don't have a need to carry it or anything. Um, this is my... I, it was an XL that was converted into a macro. Um, that's the XL on the slide. I just bought a macro frame for it. Again, this one's 17 rounds. Um, it's a great gun. Don't get me wrong, I could buy like a late, uh, like a light for it and buy a holster. But I feel like I just, I have enough carry guns that I don't really feel like I need to. But it was just, it was another gun to add to the collection. Same thing with this. This is my MMP shield. It was, at the time,
time they were phasing this one out for the Gen 2, and they only wanted 200 bucks for it, brand new. I don't touch this gun anymore, I'm not gonna lie. I have absolutely no reason to bring this out to the range, but... I mean, it's... I don't... It's a gun. It is a gun, let me put it that way. And then same thing with this. At the time, this is just a Glock 43. Um, at the time, when I bought this, in like 2019, like everyone and their brother was carrying a Glock 43. It's six rounds of 9mm, which isn't much. And the problem with it is, again, it's six rounds out of this gun. The problem with it is the 365 came out. If I can accurately represent this, it is th uh, it is smaller in both in every aspect. It is a smaller gun, and this one holds ten rounds. With this big magazine, this magazine extension isn't. It's not an extension. It's just a a finger extension. If I put the equivalent which of this on, it then makes this 12 rounds. So there's just... Th there's no reason for it anymore. Again, there's nothing wrong with it, it's a Glock, but I just have no need to carry this. Um, just 6 rounds and 9 mil. There's just no... yeah, like I said, there's no need to carry it anymore. Now this guy, I don't, I don't know where I stand on it. Look, it, this one's ten rounds of nine mil out of again. The Glock forty three is actually bigger than it, um, so it's a good size for ten rounds of nine mil, and it was only at the time three hundred bucks. I don't know if it still is or isn't. I like it. It shoots great and everything, but. I think there's just nothing special about it. Again, it's just another 9mm. But this one, I do actually, I like it. Um, like I said, 10 rounds of 9mm for 300 bucks. I've not, I've not had any problems with it. So, I think this one, if you're in need of a, a like a concealed carry or just a carry gun, I think this is a very good, uh, what you get is a very good What am, I, what am I trying to say here? For the price, you get something pretty good. Let me just, I'll put it that way. Alrighty. Moving along. What haven't I showed? I guess we can go up this that's what 45 looks like 45 ACP it is a big chunky boy and this is my gun that shoots it and this is a Kimber uh, custom LW this one was a Cabela's exclusive that's why it's got like the uh, the brownish tannish color to it so yeah, I mean, just to have a uh, 45 and a 1911 in the collection, I feel like this was a, a pretty good piece. Next up is my Glock 20 Gen 5. This is the MOS, so it's got the nice, uh, it's, uh, got a nice little plate on top, so you can just switch it out for a red dot sight. It is chambered in 10 millimeter. Which, I know it sounds like 9mm and 10mm are right next to each other, but this is a, this is no joke of a round. Um, if you didn't watch my last video, the story behind this was a gentleman bought it brand new for like $650, shot 100 rounds out of it, realized that 10mm was too much for him, and sold it back to the store. Now, I paid $400 for it. 
it, which again, it's, it's basically brand new. It still had its box and everything. Um, so I can only imagine that he probably sold it for like 300 to shoot a gun 100 rounds and then lose 300 bucks on it is absurd to me, but it's a great gun. I love shooting 10 mil. I shot it the other day out of this thing, and it's an absolute blast to shoot. Very accurate, very fun gun. Next up, this one's my Zestava Model 70. It shoots... It. it shoots this little guy. This is a 32 ACP. Um, 32 ACP, especially out of this gun. There's like no recoil. It is a. Didn't come with a holster, but I don't know why. You, why you would carry something like this? This to me, um, it is stamped with the month and the year it was made. So this is in 1986, and. Shooting 32 out of it, a lot of fun. It's a silly gun. Like I said, no recoil, but for me, this is just a range gun. Um, but it is a lot of fun. It is. So next up, this is gonna be my Glock 27. It is chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson. And this, it's a very controversial round, to be honest, um, because it's not that much. It's not that much bigger than nine millimeter, but it takes up a lot of capacity. So it's a pretty decent sized gun, and it only holds nine rounds. Um, it's where potentially out of this gun, like a, a gun this size. Again, this is a SIG uh, P320, P365, excuse me. Um, this holds 10, and it's very similar. Um, obviously, the bigger the gun you go, the less ammo it'll hold, but regardless, um, a gun this size, it's a lot of fun. Of course, my pinky doesn't fit. I'm not planning on carrying this. This was a police trade-in, so it does have night sights. Um, but it, it was a fun range toy. Again, just to own 40 cal and shoot a fun little gun. But I, I mean, I guess I could. But like I said, I already have enough guns for carry. So just a fun little range toy. Nothing, uh, nothing serious with that one. Next up, this is my Taurus 605. This one shoots 38 Special and 357 Magnum. Um, 357 is no slouch of a round, and out of a gun this size, I did not enjoy it. However, 38 Special was very enjoyable. Um, again, that's what I like about a gun like this, and like the Glock 27 I just showed you, is that it's small, it's meant for carry, and I could very well carry it, uh, but also at the same time, if I just want it to be a fun range toy, I can certainly do that as well. So something like this, you could just put it in your pocket, um, but uh, you know, you could also carry something like that, absolutely. Alrighty, we're down to the wire, which means you guys know what guns are coming next. This is my Desert Eagle. You've seen this plenty of times before, but ammo for it is very hard to come by right now. I'm down to one box, and even then that box isn't complete. That is what a 50 Action Express looks like. It's a 50 caliber round. Um, 
I mean, I've, I've touched on this gun a lot before, but just the short rundown. This gun is a lot of fun. It's a great, um, it's a great mixture of power, but you can also handle that power. Um, it's a big beefy gun, but like I said, you will have a lot of fun with this and I mean, just highly, highly recommend. It is a great, like I said, it's a great mixture of power and fun, and you just, you can't go wrong with something like this. This is one of my all-time favorite guns that I bought. And then, lastly on the list, is also not a surprise, you've seen this plenty of times as well, but I can't help myself. This is my 500 Magnum. It is... I have all kinds of ammo for this thing. This is around what you should shoot. This is a 350 grain round. This is this round here is meant for like hunting. Um, if you get, want to get wonky with it, we have the 700 grain lead hardcast. You can see the two together. How much bigger that round is. This is just meant to absolutely destroy your hands and your wrist. Look, it... I don't hate it, and the more I shoot it, the more I come around to appreciate what it is. I use it for the range, just have fun with it. Um, it's no slouch, it, it'll hurt you after a while, but... If you're shooting stuff like this, it's a it's fun. It's it's a lot, but it's a, it's a fun a lot. If you're shooting something like this, you will want to sell the gun and get rid of it after a while. But nonetheless, um, I I appreciate what it is. If I had to pick, the Desert Eagle wins every day for me. It is it's a lot of fun. Um, and like I said, it's a lot of power, but a lot of fun. This is a lot of power and a little bit of fun. But regardless, those big beefy boys are, these are my two big, uh, my hand cannons. So with that being said, that is every handgun that I own. I will probably film the, uh, the rifles next in their own separate video but I guess I will leave it there if you have any other uh, video suggestions let me know if you have any other gun suggestions that you want me to buy let me know and I guess I will see you guys in the next video peace what's going on everybody um, this video is either its own video or I put in, I'm gonna put it at the end of the handgun video but regardless, we have now moved on to the, um, I should say long guns, because there's a couple AR pistols here. Um, but regardless, I think I'm going to start with an absolutely, uh, everything about this gun is a shame. Um, so first off and foremost, the pistol brace ban just went into effect, so I no longer have any pistol braces anymore. Um, I, it, it's just not worth it, I just got rid of the things. Um, so I have to run just a bare tube, and I haven't shot it like this yet, but I can tell you right now I'm not going to like it, so... This gun's more than likely going to get deconstructed and become something else in the future. At one point, uh, this was my home defense gun. So, first off, there's a long story behind this. I ordered this from Palmetto, this upper receiver here. Um, it was supposed to be 300 blackout. When I went to chamber around, um, it wouldn't chamber. So I took it home. When I took this handguard off here, the barrel is stamped 556. 
So this gun is a 556. Um, of course, that's not what I bought, but I just said screw it. Um, I called them one day and they said there was like a three hour call wait. So I just said screw it. I'm just going to keep it as a 556. And I did. I had a nice uh, optic up here. I installed the bad lever. And this even has a LaRue tactical trigger in it. Um, so this was. And I even gave it the. Uh, this is an arrow. Um, Ambidextrous charging handle. This was a very nice gun at one point. But now that I have to. Uh, I had to get rid of all my braces. I. I don't know what I'm going to do with this thing. I guess I'm gonna get. I'm just gonna. This mar, it's a Marauder style handguard. I, I guess I'm just gonna get rid of it. Again, at the time it was something silly, but like what the poor things become. If I can do this quietly here. For anyone who hasn't seen, that is a 5.56. It is a it's a relatively small cartridge, but it does definitely a pack a punch as well. It's a it's a very good uh, caliber for rifles. So set this poor boy aside. I guess while we're on the theme of 5.56. Five, um, the more I look at these guns, like I don't typically pull my guns out of my gun safe like this, but I'm realizing that I don't really have any practical long guns, if that makes any sense. So. This guy right here was a uh, it was a silly build I did. It's got basic furniture, basic four uh, four way quad rail. It's got the it was supposed to be like an old um, I guess like early two thousands kind of M four look alike. And I mean it shoots great. There's nothing wrong with it, but there's also nothing special about it either. It is a, uh, it's another AR. While well, I am on the topic of ARs, here's the other, my other poor, uh, sap of a gun. This was my CMMG Banshee. I, uh, Again, I had to take the brace off of it and destroy it because of the new laws. Um, this guy right here is chambered in five by five point seven. Um, it is a, it's a tiny little guy. Its purpose is that it's really fast. It's a really fast round. Um, this was I had the uh, the Romeo Five up red dot on top. I had a nice Odin with pressure plate. Um, it, had, it had a really nice titanium muzzle brake installed. This was a very nice gun. I again I can't shoulder this thing or anything, so I just have to kind of wing it, I guess. So, unfortunately another gun hit by the brace ban, but I guess I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this thing. But, it, it's, like I said, 5.7. It, it did shoot great, and it was a, it was a nice small little gun. 
moving right along. While we're on the topic of ARs, this is my last AR-15 that I have to show you. And if you notice anything by about 12.7, that means 50 caliber. This is chambered in a big beefy 50 Beowulf. Um, I don't have an optic on here, and honestly, I might just take the optic off the Banshee. It does have a very impressive muzzle brake on the end. I went with a gray scheme. Again, I'm filming this at night, so I don't know how well this shows up, but it does have gray furniture on it. Um, I mean, what I, what isn't there to say about this? It's a very beefy, big round, and it absolutely kicks the crap out of your shoulder. But it's it's a very fun gun to shoot. I'm not gonna lie. Um, Um, yeah, it's just, if you ever get the chance to shoot 50 Beowulf, it's a lot of fun. I don't think you'll, I don't think you'll regret it at all. I guess while I am on the topic of ARs, I'll show you the next one here, if it even fits. So this was my actual first AR build that I did. Um, I don't really want to mess with it, just because of... It is my first build. This is a 308. Um, it, was, it was meant for like a longer range. I think it's a 22 inch barrel on here. Um, I did a. This is a Luth AR. So the, the cheek rises up. This back strap uh, goes out. And then obviously there's a little monopod that can extend uh, downward if you want it to. Um, I have a Vortex optic on here. There's nothing fancy about it. I have a JTL, JTL bipod, and then just for shits and giggles, I put a big old uh, muzzle brake on the end. Um, yeah, it's just, it's my first AR build. Like I said, I don't really want to mess with it. I just kind of leave it as it is and... Just want to just leave it at that. And then... The last AR that I have to show you is my latest build. This is a... 12 inch SBR that I did. Um, I went a little all out on this. I have a EOTech. I have a red, the uh, EOTech holographic and the magnifier. If you know anything about that optic combo, you know I have more in the optics than I do the rest of the gun. But besides that point, I've always liked in video games, seeing this setup for optics, and I kind of I always I've always liked it. Actually, having it, I'm not like okay. Don't get me wrong; it's great and it does the job. But for the price that I have into these two pieces of optic, I'm I'm not impressed that much. Um, like I said, it's great, it does its job, but there's nothing special about it. I put a, what is this, the Streamlight Pro Tag on the front here. Again, that's kind of our shits and giggles sort of thing. I, uh, it, it's a 3 I'm not, it's a 308 SBR, I'm not really home defensing with this thing, so... I don't really need a light. It's more for aesthetics, but it does run. Got a press pressure pie pad on the top. And then I did a silencer co 
was the break on the end of this thing. Next up, we're going to move into our my AKs. This is a Riley Defense um, AK-74. This is chambered in... It is chambered in... This is 545. Um, very comparable to 556, but this is a very uh, pleasant round to shoot. Again, you don't even really... Like 556, five, there's hardly any recoil to it. And just a uh, overall very pleasant round to shoot. Um, it does have this very wonky AK-74 style muzzle brake. And pretty sure it's crazy loud, so I'm not going to do it. But it does have a uh, side folding stock. This thing is not very comfortable. It's pretty much a shovel handle. So, um, I don't necessarily like using it, but overall, I am a huge fan of the AK platform, and this thing is a very pleasant gun to shoot. And then, lastly, first AK that I ever got. This is an AK-47 by Palmetto State Armory. That's pretty good. I, uh, it shoots the classic uh, 7.62 by 39. Um, there's, again, there's nothing really special about this. This one's a GF4 model. Um, it shoots great, and I absolutely love shooting this thing. I, uh, to be honest, I've been meaning to. I want to switch out this furniture for like some wood to make it really look like an AK-47. But uh, regardless, for what Palmetto is offering here, I love it. It's a great shooting gun. Um, and I own an AK, <laughs> so. Alrighty, so, gun you have recently seen on the channel. And this is my Henry. It is a single shot, um, 45-70. If you've never seen 45-70 before, it is uh, it's quite the beefy round. Out of this gun right here, originally I wanted a lever action. However, the more I think about it, um, like a lever, in act a lever action 4570, in my opinion, I never shot one, so I don't know, but based off of just me thinking out loud, I feel like it would have been a lot to handle, and I don't know how much I'm going to want to sit there and, you know, keep cocking 4570. So this is just a single shot, and to be honest, I absolutely love this gun. It, oh my gosh, it's so powerful. So much fun. I, I am in love with this thing. Last several times we went out to the range, I've taken it with me. It is a... I just, I just can't express how much fun it is. Next up... I guess I'll flip it around here. This is my um, Lee Enfield. It's an SMLE Mark III. Yeah, Mark III. This is a British Enfield. Probably should have just taken the rounds out of the packaging, but oh well. This is a 1916, so it's a World War One 
and it is chambered in this big boy. This is a 303 British. Um, again, it's a World War I gun. Um, it is over a hundred years old now. It was... It has been sporterized, but a lot of guns from, especially from this era, have been. But, let me tell you, 303 British is no slouch. This gun, this gun kicks you pretty good. But, regardless, it's, it's a fun caliber to shoot. I do occasionally take this out to the range with me. Um, the only thing with this one is the magazine, if you have over... If you have a couple rounds loaded up into it, the spring decides to kind of go a little cattywampus, but it is its original mag. Um, like I said, just it's a lot of fun to shoot. It's an old gun that does still shoot, so I love it. I sort of I love that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, no, great shooting gun. 303 British. I mean, I can't. Me personally, I eat this sort of thing up at, all day, every day. An old functional gun. While we're on the topic, though, I believe this one's functional, but I have not shot it yet. This is my brand new. This is a 19. Um, I believe it was a 1938 Type 99 Arisica. This is a Japanese World War II rifle. Um, the only thing with it is somebody broke the bolt off. The bolt's supposed to stick straight out. Somebody broke... This is the original bolt, but they welded it on an angle to be like American guns. Um, this is chambered in 7.7 Japanese. I don't have any 7.7 Japanese. If I did, I would shoot this thing and find out once and for all if it's a good. But again, it's a World, even if it doesn't shoot, it's a World War II rifle. Um, again, I absolutely love that sort of thing, especially functioning old guns. But World War II rifle. Um, one of my buddies sold me this. His grandfather got it way back in the day. Um, like I said, I absolutely love these sort of older rifles. And especially if it's from World War II or anything like that. Ooh, next up's a big boy. Next up, I've shown this on the channel recently as well, but... Deserve some love. This is a model 1898 Springfield Craig Jorgensen. Um, one of the ways you can always tell it's a Craig is by this big uh, side loading box. I uh, don't have any 405 Winchester. And I emailed Hornaday. And they said sometime in May they were hoping to get a shipment done. But here we are and there is no shipment of 405 Winchester. So, I don't know when I'm going to be able to shoot this thing. I would absolutely love to shoot this thing. I bet you it kicks like a mule. The trigger is absolutely huge. And so is this barrel. Originally this gun was made in um, 3040 Craig. However, somebody at some point in time took it and converted it. If you ever played Red Dead Redemption 2, this is an 1898. So this rifle was made around the time of Red Dead Redemption 2. And the 405 Winchester is considered a safari cartridge or an elephant round. Um, so without spending tens of thousands of dollars, I think... Red Dead Redemption 2 is a 577 Nitro Express. It's a double barrel elephant gun. Um, but this is technically a, a Red Dead 2 era elephant gun. This is about as close as you can get for a... Mm, 
much more reasonable price. Again, any kind of Nitro Express round is usually going for $10,000, $20,000. Um, and then especially when you get this old. Yeah. So, I'd love to shoot this thing. It does have like some pretty cool peep sights on it. And whenever I do, I will let you guys know. But I need some ammo first. If anybody you know has five, uh, 405 Winchester, please let me know. I will happily pay. I take that back. Gunbroker has some, but they want like $10 a round, which is absolutely absurd for that caliber. It should be around $4 a round. But, hey. Next up, this is my Savage. Actually, I don't remember what a specific... This is a Model 25. This guy. We got a nice old box of Remington ammo. This is chambered in 222 Remington, or 222. Um... Very comparable to 556 or 223. Um, mainly just wanted a 222 in the collection. And my buddy had this and no longer wanted it. So now I have it. I don't, I, mean, I guess I could kill like some small rodents with it, but I don't ever do anything with the gun. It's just sort of in my collection. Nothing really special about it. But hey, it's it's a Savage. It does work. I've shot it before. Um, nothing special, but again, nothing wrong with it. This was much easier to do for the handguns video, but... This is my PSL. This is chambered in a beefy 762-554R. R standing for the rimmed here. Um, this one in particular, I've shown this off before, but for the sake of the video, um, it's a 1975. This was actually when they were making them in Romania. So this is a true Romanian import. Um, technically, it's not a Dragunov, even though it looks like one. Real Dragunovs are stu stupid expensive. Um, but regardless, this is probably as close to something I'll get. I believe this is closer to the PK... Or, I'm sorry, the uh, AKM internally, but externally it, it looks like a dragon off. Um, and it shoots a nice big round, so, you know. Another fun gun to shoot, nothing wrong with it. I've always mentioned, anytime I see this, up, when you're up and down, um, the, the, the optics are true Romanian optics, so it's in Romanian. Um, and up in Romanian is sus. So anytime I, uh, you, you know, if you know, you know, it's silly. Try, trying to move these guns around. Again, super easy when I was doing the uh, handgun video. This right here is my Beretta um, A350 Extrema. This was my... Was it? Hold on, let me do some math real quick. Was it? I also have a sneeze coming on. Anywho, assuming I don't sneeze, um, 
I don't remember if I got this one first or if I got my AR first. I don't remember. I believe this is my first gun. Uh, I got this for dove hunting. If you've never seen a 12 gauge before, um, there you are. But nothing special about it. This is my dove gun. I, uh, a great, great gun, great hunting shotgun. I, uh, I don't hunt too often. And typically I only ever go dove hunting every year, but this is the gun I use for that. All right, and I have one rifle left. Many of you can guess what it is, if I can get this even into frame at all. Well, for the setup that I have going on here, this is as, a, as good as I can get this thing into frame. This is the Evermighty Barrett M82, chambered in 50 BMG. You'll notice every other caliber I've shown you has been able to fit like in one hand, but not, not this big bad boy. This is, it's not the biggest caliber you can own as a civilian, but it kind of, how do I want to word this? It kind of is at the same point. So any other caliber bigger than a 50 BMG is very rare. There's like the 577 Tyrannosaurus. Um, there's 6 and 700 Nitro Express. There is a couple rounds out there. Those guns, guns go for tens of thousands of dollars. Um, and they're very, very rare. So 50 BMG is... Arguably, like, the biggest, most common you can find. Again, any, this is, there's plenty of this stuff circulating, It's and it's very huge, but anything bigger than this is pretty rare, so this is sort of what you'll find. Um, I don't believe the video can possibly do this gun justice. But you know what? We have technology. I'll just pick you guys up for a second. So, ignoring my knee, this is the, uh, it does have a monopod in the back. It has a 10 round magazine. Huge spring in the back. I got this, this is a primary arms. Um, I'm trying to remember the I think it's a six by 24 if I remember correctly. The price for an optic that big was actually really good. So that's why I got it. Um, typically big scoped weapon, like big scopes that are meant for these kinds of weapons that can handle 50 BMG. Um, they're normally like three grand, four grand. They're a lot of money, but this was this was only about a thousand dollars. Very, very reasonable. Moving on up, I do have the, the bipod and the charging or the uh, carry handle for it. This is a big uh, 29 inch barrel and it has the classic uh, M M82. I don't know why I forgot that all of a sudden. M82 muzzle brake on it. So I'll just put you guys back up here. Again, very, uh, very huge, very cool, very iconic gun. I mean, you don't have to be a gun guy, and you probably know what this thing is. I, uh, I played a lot of MW2 back in the day. I just, words can't, words can't describe this thing. Again, even if you just look at this in person, it's very impressive. Um, if you ever get the chance to shoot one, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, of all the guns to shoot 50 BMG out of, I think this is probably the, the coolest, and you'll have a lot of fun. 
you you get absolutely punched by the um, gas coming out of the muzzle brake on the end. So, like I said, highly, highly recommend this thing. It is so much fun. And I guess that's it for today's video. Um, if you have any guns that you want me to buy, you think would be cool to add to the collection, um, please let me know. Unfortunately, Delaware enacted its assault weapons ban, so I can't get every gun that I would like, but you know, it kind of is what it is. Um, but I hope you all enjoy this video. This is an updated from my last video that I did, and I uh, had a lot of fun with this video. So, I just, I just love talking about guns. Um, so I hope y'all enjoyed. I might do a video in the future of me shooting all my guns, but that could be really complicated. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Dragging all the guns out to the farm to shoot them. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.